find something kind of interesting today. I've got this chair here. This heap is called an Omega Track. It's piled high with junk, but this is sort of an old school, like, uh, all-terrain wheelchair. And uh, as you can see, the components on it are very large, like this caster, the steel, um, pretty much everything about this is just extremely overbuilt. I got this thing probably about five years ago for 85 bucks. Jam some batteries in it, and it's really interesting. The chair has air suspension. There are four airbags on this thing with an onboard air compressor. The rear air compressor currently, well, it turns on, but it doesn't actually fill the rear ear, but it doesn't actually fill the rear airbags. There's a little solenoid valve down in here that I believe is stuck. And the way these things work is it basically has a straight axle in the front and two drive motors. One of the motors is responsible for making the chair go forward and backwards. And the second motor, if you're familiar with how uh, rear axles on cars work, it is connected directly to the spider gears inside that differential and it makes those turn. So when you're moving forward and back on this thing, your front drive tires are locked. And the only way they will turn independently is if that second motor spins up. Now I've charged this thing up and I think it's got enough power to do something. So I'm gonna get all this garbage off here. I think I've got the leg rest for it somewhere. And we're gonna power this thing up and see if we can get stuck in the front yard with it. Now I have absolutely no idea where the reg where the leg rests for this thing ended up. Um, I think they're back there around the corner, maybe in the parts area. But I've got these little short ones off of another Quickie S626 back there that has um, a bad motor on it. Let's see if these things fit on here at least. Eh, kinda, but not really. Um, I've got these other ones here. This pin looks like it's about the right size, but this plastic here interferes with being able to attach on here. So I'm gonna do a little bit more digging and see if maybe I can find them. But if not, I might just have to dangle my feet off the front of this thing. Okay, we actually got kind of lucky. Um, so, so many loud cars around here. This whole mechanism on one of them was broken off. So that allows for clearance to fit down into those mounting holes. When I took the bolt out of this, the whole thing just snapped in half and then I just used a hacksaw to uh, cut the rest of this part off. So now we have a leg rest that actually goes in there and it's like somewhat solid. So I think what I'm gonna do is get out the uh, die grinder, fire up the compressor and uh, trim the rest of this off. And these were spare parts from a chair that I don't have. So we'll just go ahead. Yeah, this one's missing part of the latch mechanism anyway. So we'll just go ahead and hack this up and uh, make it work for now. Okay, we've got our part chucked up in the vise here. So uh, let's go ahead and start uh, sawing right down here. Perfect. Okay, now all we have to do is reattach this to the leg rest with one of these bolts. I think it is this one. And there's a little um, keyed section that that goes into. So basically you just put this on until it locks into place. Drop in your screw, tighten the thing up. And now we have leg rests. They, uh, they sort of swivel around. Um, which isn't too big of a deal. Actually, I guess I could put a Simpson tie between these two to sort of hold them together. Eh, I don't know. Um, let me put the rest of this stuff away and then uh, I'll grab a cushion and we'll go try this thing out. Okay, let's power this thing up. We've got two power switches. We've got the auxiliary controller and the main controller. There used to be a speed pot here or a little thing that will allow you to adjust the speed, but I kind of broke that. So I'm just having to solder it directly on. So it's set to the uh, full speed position right now. But if you notice, our front end is almost touching the wheels. So all I have to do is fill up the front airbags and this will raise back up. Uh, 
There we go. And uh, it's got a dump valve as well. So yeah, it's a pretty cool system. Uh, all right, well, I'm gonna grab my phone in case I get stuck out in the yard because that's a very high likelihood. And um, let's try it out. Okay, uh, I'm sitting in the thing, so I'm gonna reinflate our front airbags. There we go. The leg rests are not exactly solid. I sort of crossed them over each other and I'll, I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, and this thing kind of sounds like a spaceship. I don't know if there's a bad bearing or just the way the belt drive works, but when you turn, um, it makes really weird noises. Okay, we'll go outdoor mode. Now listen when I turn. That sounds crazy. Okay, I really need to do something about these footrests. These are, um, yeah. I ran out of Simpson ties, so I didn't have any way to attach these. I guess I could have just crossed them and put a zip tie on maybe. And I guess it'll work. <laughs> there we go, quality. But yeah, the suspension is pretty much amazing because you're riding on air. Okay, wow, that's amazing. Um, I never even thought about air suspension on a wheelchair, but it's too bad this thing doesn't go faster. And it's too bad the batteries in this aren't better also. Um, the electronics on it are kind of weird. It just has a giant circuit board with both the motor, with both of the motor controllers built into it. So I don't really trust it. Um, but it's a really cool thing. I mean, seriously. Well, the batteries on this are already going dead, so I'm gonna hop into the other chair for now. But yeah, it's, um, I need to look at the belt drive. It's got a couple of cogged uh, drive belts on this that engage with the drive pulleys. And I need to look at some of the bearings and stuff because I don't think that noise is good. Um, yeah, anyways. But yeah, I mean, the thing does have full rehab seating. It's got uh, tilt, recline, power legs. And it used to have some covers on the back of it, but uh, years ago after I got this thing, I, it was before I, uh, speaking of which, <laughs> it was before I had the steampunk chair and I wanted to build something a little bit more like mechanical looking. So I took off all the plastics and I put all the seating control modules. I mounted them on the back of this thing, kind of exposed everything down here. Uh, you can see the rear springs, rear airbags are tucked way down in there. Uh, this is the tilt actuator, recline actuator, and uh, everything can be manually controlled with these boxes here too. Let's see, tilt I think? Yeah. And then I think, yeah, recline. But apparently these things were built back in the late 70s, early 80s, something like that. Uh, they're made by an airplane manufacturer of all things. I guess the story was the one of the owners of the main guys that worked there had some sort of health issues or maybe it was someone in his family and they um, there were no good power wheelchairs at the time. So he told his team of engineers that build airplanes, build me a wheelchair. And this is what they came up with. Um, 
yeah, it's crazy heavy duty. It's, uh, here, let me, let me see if I can show you some of the drivetrain here. So you can see down in here, we've got, there's the front airbag right there. Then we've got some drive pulleys on this side. One of the drive motors is over here on the back. And then over on the other side is, uh, actually I think this side is the turning motor and the other side is the drive motor. And then inside this box here is the air compressor with the solenoid valves. And there's an air drain down here somewhere. But uh, yeah, this, this box used to be mounted elsewhere and I just kind of stuck it right there uh, when I removed all the plastics and everything. But I don't know, it was just kind of a cool piece of history and I, I thought about getting rid of it at one point, but I don't know. Um, I'll probably just hang on to it. If I can figure out a way to adapt two standard regular power chair controllers onto one of these things, because the joystick, forward and back is one controller, left and right is the other one. So you'd have to figure out a way to integrate two controllers together. Because right now, like, there isn't really any heat sinking and the electronics are super old. And I just, I wouldn't trust this thing running around. Especially this one, how old it is. I was just editing the footage and realized that I didn't really get any shots of how the uh, drivetrain works on this thing. So, I've got it on a jack here. I'm going to try and get the camera down in here and try to show you. See if you can adjust the exposure a bit. There we go. So, this is the left side of the chair. Way down there is the main drive motor. And when I push forward and back on the joystick, that one is what turns the wheels. There you can see they're both turning there. And then over here on this side is the turning motor. This one is what actuates the spider gears for the uh, turning to work. Let's brighten this up a little bit. There we go. And you can see the actual motor back there and it goes through these pulleys and up to a shaft that goes into the gearbox. So let's turn now. So there you can see uh, in true spider gear fashion we get one turning forward and the other turning backwards. And then you can combine that with going forward and then if you turn it speeds up one tire and slows down the other one. But yeah, it's a, a super interesting setup. I, I never would have thought to design something like this. And I've tried lubricating all these pulleys and everything. I'm not quite sure where that noise is coming from. Um, I will have to figure that out at some point. Yeah, you can... Yeah, those are the airlines. You can't really see a whole lot down in there, but this is like a full-on transaxle. There you can see the, the whole gearbox assembly there, and it's got the output hubs on each side. And it's filled full of gear oil, just like a, uh, a regular, you know, axle would be. But, let's see, I think you can see, yeah, there's the drive pulley down there. So to get this thing to work uh, with a regular setup of power chair controllers, you'd have to be able to run two controllers and have mixing built in. Now I'm sure that is entirely possible. Underneath this front cover is where those electronics are. Um, but I don't know, it, it is something that is definitely doable. Um, there's someone I know real well that actually designs power converters and whatnot. I'm probably going to take this cover off, get a picture of that board and send it to him and see if he'd be interested in designing another one that, um, well, that might be a little bit more robust, as it were. Robust, robust, robust. Thank you, Lewis Rossman. But yeah, I'm gonna hang on to the thing. It's pretty neat. Uh, the motors, the drive motors are actually sort of an off-the-shelf industrial uh, type of setup, like uh, industrial drives or conveyor belts. They're just perfectly round motors, and they, they go into these sort of half-circle slots on the side of the or some brackets that are on the side of the transaxle, and they're just held in place with hose clamps. 
So it really wouldn't be difficult at all to change the motors out for something with a little more power or speed or whatnot. The only thing I'm not sure about is those dry belts or where I would get those, but anyways, another random thing in the fleet. Oh boy, safety is about to happen here. It's trying to slip off the jack, but let me see if I can, let me see if I can turn the camera upside down and give you a look under here. Anyways, I've had that thing for quite some time and I haven't really made a video about it. I know there's at least a couple of people out there watching this that do have one of these chairs. Uh, they even came with a factory air horn option. Some of them did, mine doesn't have that. But yeah, it's, um, like I said, it's an interesting piece of history. And back when money wasn't an object, you know, they, they tell the engineers, make the best thing you can, and then we'll have the accountants figure out how to pay for it later. <laughs> So I can't remember if the gate on the side of the house, actually both of them are open or closed. And also the gardeners were here and they tend to leave the gates open sometimes. Well, I don't really feel like bumping out there in my chair because the grass is not exactly even. So I've got the uh, little axial rock crawler set up here and uh, it's got a camera mounted on it. It links to this here tablet. So as I'm running around, uh, I can, see what's going on. So we're gonna remotely drive this thing outside and um, see if the gate's open. So if I hit record on this, then I should be able to take the footage and put it into this video. So let's go see if the gate's open. Mm -hmm. 